and are the same qualities as the Creator has. Perhaps we can never become absolute perfection as the Creator. Whatever it is must have been. I cannot conceive of the creative force, not enough to verbalize it and make sense to everyone, but I think we can obtain relative perfection and become one with the Creator by improving ourselves based upon what we have to work with. There's no limit to human abilities, to what humans can do. We limit ourselves by our own conditioning. Number one, do you think that most people are really trying to find out about all these things? Number two, many humans are. I would say there are millions of people who have an inner urging towards something better, especially in this day and age, because now there are more of them here. Out of the great majority, roughly 220 million people today in the United States, only about two or three million are really interested in what makes them tick. What is involved in life, the purpose of it all, and in really growing and building on their character? The other 200 and something million are merely living a conditioned response from their environment, and they don't think about it at all. Look, here we are in the city of Atlanta, a huge city. Look at the people walking back and forth. They're positive in many ways, and yet they never really give it a thought as to why they are, why they're capable of building these tremendous buildings and driving those tremendous vehicles they drive. And Catholicism has been losing quite a few members because those members say that their religion is not in tune with the times, and this is the case in many other religious bodies. Do you believe that formal religion is just not keeping in tune with the times, or has it ever been in tune with them? Number two. Oh, considerably in tune. Essentially, it's this. The church for the last 2,000 years has done a remarkable job with what it's had to work with. Remember, they're dealing with part of the truth part of the truth. I've just finished this week a new book called The Life and Death of Planet Earth. Now what it points out is that the absolute truth is what we're all trying to find out and we prove this subjectively. We know it and nobody can change our minds. Because we know it just like I know that fire burns my fingers because I've stuck them in there. You can tell me all you want, but I won't believe it until I do it. Knowledge is what we're seeking. The churches started off with a paradigm, a framework of understanding, and they had to work within that framework, and their framework was quite narrow. Then Jesus came along and broadened it tremendously. He resurrected the ideas of love and brotherhood, and working, you too can do as I do. He was showing by his lifestyle that you can be perfect. You can know yourself. You can know your creator. You can know what it's all about. All you have to do is get off the dime and stop being so lazy and pay attention. That's what he was saying. Human beings have a tendency to want to put frameworks around things so they can be comfortable with them. So the early church put a framework around the truth. Theologians have translated and interpreted what has been said by all the great teachers until it's been quite distorted. However, even with all of the translations and misinterpretations of what was really said in the ancient times, they've done a remarkable job. They've done some bad things as well as good things in the eye of history. But the information is here. All you have to do is want it and dig for it. I found it. I found it for myself. There's more than one path. The reason I followed the path of the Great Pyramid is because I'm a doubter, a skeptic, and there's something made of stone, the world's largest stone structure. It can be checked and rechecked and measured and remeasured. It's been around for a very, very long time, and there's no doubt it's there. However, the metaphysical idea, somebody going into a trance and some voice talking through him telling me he's Jesus, that doesn't prove anything to me. It could be, but I could never prove it. I can prove what the Great Pyramid does, and that turned me on. There are answers to everyone's questions. We each have progressed, you see. I accept we've lived many thousands of lifetimes. Let me repeat that. I accept we've lived many thousands of lifetimes. People say, oh, reincarnation, I can't believe that. Well, they probably didn't believe it in their last lifetime either. I probably didn't either. However, each time we live a life, we learn something more towards this perfection this perfection. We're supposed to be growing until finally we reach a point where we choose our incarnation with such great care that we incarnate to two very sharp parents at which point we grow with a tremendous rate of speed. 
That's the purpose of it all. Civilization's purpose is to provide the playground, the background, the environment that enhances soul growth, character growth, an environment which enhances the ability of humans to practice the virtues. By practicing these virtues, love, brotherhood, and working, you too can do as I do, which are part of universal law. What you put out comes back to you, karma. You set an example for others by practicing patience, tolerance, forbearance, kindness, and charity. In your everyday life, you grow. By your example, you set off a multitude of self-sustaining series of events, a chain reaction which strengthens the truth. I found this for myself. This is the message in all of the esoteric teachings in all seven of the great religions. I think the key, the key thing that the present human civilization is missing, is that the idea has been lost that we're all responsible. Individual responsibility has been lost. We want some wizard to come along and do it for us. We want the preacher on Sunday to save us from our sins. We want the man in the confessional booth to cleanse us. We don't want to do it for ourselves. Well, there are no wizards. Every single ego, every single created individual or discrete bundle of mental energy must do it for himself. This is part of the message of the Great Pyramid, and as soon as humans realize this and take responsibility for their actions, the problems of the planet Earth will be diminished a thousandfold. Number one, I found it most fascinating, the fact you mentioned a moment ago that the individual ego has a hand in the choice of his or her own incarnated person. Number two, this is esoteric information. I use the term esoteric information. Esoteric meaning inside, inside information, and it's only information that has been given to me. I have not proven it yet. Even if I did prove it, it would still be only information to you. So the difference between information and knowledge is clear. We need to make that clear. Now, my information is that each of us chooses our parents and our station and our situation, even our race. Listen to this, folks. Listen to this crap. Beginning again. One of the individuals that I have been told about in this esoteric information was George Washington Carver, who deliberately incarnated into a race that was downtrodden to work on the idea of bringing them up. He was an ego of tremendous advancement, and when he did incarnate into that environment, which was a terrible environment, I understand he may have lost a few points because he became embittered near the end. Had he remained without bitterness, he would have gained. This is the story I have. We all take a chance incarnating into a civilization that can drag us down, because when you get inside of a physical body, you become subject to the nuisances of that animal body and the conditioning and the responses, and it's up to you with those ten qualities of mind to overcome those. That's why being well-disciplined is vitally important and permissiveness is not wise. Well, folks, there's no way I'm going to be able to read to you all of this interview because it's just too long. So I'm going to pick out some pertinent uh, points. This is number two talking. Uh, and this is an excerpt from a paragraph. However, don't permit it. Don't say laziness is good for everybody because you won't get uptight if you're lazy. We have so many errors on the idea of human potential and what to do with it. I believe in being well disciplined but not cruelly. I believe in responsibility in the organization I belong to. The Stell Group. The Stell Group. The group in which Lars Hansen was reared. Now I want to quote to you from a book called The New World Order by A. Ralph Epperson, which you can order from Publius Press in Tucson, Arizona. On page 67 in The New World Order, Mr. A. Ralph Epperson has a direct quote from Eklal Kushana. He was the leader of the Stell Group. Mr. Tex Mars also has the same quote in one or two of his books. But I'm taking this from the New World Order by A. Ralph Epperson. Quote, Lucifer is the head of a secret brotherhood of spirits. The brotherhood is named after Lucifer because the great angel Lucifer has been responsible for the abolishment of Eden in order that men could begin on the road to a spiritual advancement. Unquote. That is the teachings of the leader of the Stell group, the group that this man belongs to. So, folks, pay attention. This again is number two, speaking. 
This is a part of the message, a band of men at the dawning of the age of Taurus, a more civilized age embodied in the Great Pyramid's mathematical code to transmit to a generation of humans living in the age of Aquarius, something they felt was vitally important. The age of Aquarius